Hey everyone, my name is Emily and welcome to my new channel, A Mom Now, or maybe I'll change the name to Mom Now, not sure, but I had an idea for this channel that I wanted to basically document my journey of becoming a mother from the pregnancy announcement, well obviously the conception story, to the pregnancy announcement, my whole pregnancy, which of course I documented and took photos and videos of everything, and then my birth which I'm still waiting for the birth video to get done being edited from my photographer, my film, my filmographer, my videographer. Um, and I'm three months postpartum and I just never pulled the trigger on uploading those videos or editing them. So I just want to jump right in and start building a channel and uploading some sort of videos. And so today I figured we would bag up some breast milk and freeze it and I can show you guys my process. This channel will be kind of like a vlog um, because I'm not so good at like acting and pretending to be like this famous YouTuber. But I definitely love making videos and I love sharing my journey with people. I have another YouTube video, a uh, YouTube channel about fish like ornamental fish, like fish tank, aquarium fish, pet fish. Um, in the basement, I have a room full of fish tanks. There's 61 fish tanks in there, and the plumbing is set up so that all the water changes are automatic. It's, it's a large production down there, but I have a channel about that. And since I became a mom, I'm doing a lot of mom things now. And I figured, well, I might as well start making some videos about being a mom. So that's it. Um, welcome to my channel. I'm Emily. I'm 29. I'll be 30 in September. We just had our first baby, me and my husband Zach. He's not home right now, but I'm sure you'll see him on the channel soon. We just had our first baby November 13th. His name is Waylon. He was born at 43 weeks gestation, 9 pounds 2 ounces, 21 and a half inches long, and Sunday he just turned 3 months. Monday he rolled over for the first time and Tuesday he laughed for the first time and right now he's taking a nap so I'll show you him real quick. Okay, I'm back. So I was just showing you like all the baby stuff on the couch. You might have noticed my um, Lansano milk sucker. I have two of them. There's one on the couch. Whenever I lay him down for a nap, I put one on one breast and put the baby on the other. And then when I have my letdown, it suctions out a bunch of milk. And that's how I get my oversupply and my stash that I have, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and then I just panned over to the laptop. I make designs for stickers and t-shirts that are print on demand and I have a like a program on my computer right now that's uploading them automatically so today I'm doing a batch of 87 designs oh, I've been, I stayed up until like 2 a.m. last night doing those um, once the baby fell asleep so it's automatically uploading my designs to Redbubble which you don't, if you don't know what Redbubble is it's a place where artists can upload their designs and then consumers can go and buy that design on a sticker, a mug, a t-shirt, a laptop case, etc, etc. But let's get into the content, okay? So I got to do my milk every four days. I do Sunday and Wednesday, which sometimes I'm busy on Wednesday because Wednesday is also the day we do chiropractor. And then since I'm already out of the house and the kids are already in the car seat, sometimes I go shopping and I can't do it on Wednesday. I do it on Thursday. And then Four days is kind of like as much as I want to do, but Kelly Mom says, KellyMom.com for milk storage um, guidelines said, I think it was like between three and like eight days the fridge can be good, or the, the milk can be good in the fridge, um, but like 72 hours was like optimal or like the maximum you really want to do. But they also said like you want to sniff the milk and make sure <clears throat> like it's not bad and everyone's milk's different and everyone's fridge is different like I keep my fridge really really cold and like honestly some of the stuff on the top shelf freezes sometimes so 
don't just copy what I'm doing. If you want to like be like me or whatever, just use what I'm doing as like an example. But like, do your own research. Talk to your medical team. Talk to your lactation consultants. Whatever. All those. Um, all of those uh, like warnings and uh, what's the word for that? Disclaimers. All the disclaimers. Okay. Because I don't want to be. I'm not responsible if like you feed your kid like some spoiled milk because you're copying what I do. This is how I do it. So let's go. Okay, so that's all we got. Um, now I have like an oversupply and my left breast is larger than my right breast so I'll just show you guys real quick like you may or may not be able to tell in the tank top but I can get like four to five ounces out of this one and only like one ounce out of this one and Waylon does not like nursing off of this one because he actually has to like suck to get the milk out and only a little bit comes out I've tried all sorts of stuff. I've tried like smaller flanges. I'm using like 15 millimeter flanges, 17 millimeter flanges. I got the pumping pals, girl, you name it. I got I got all of it. Um, so we're also gonna pull, let's get these dishes out of the sink because we're gonna have to do dishes. We're gonna have to do bottle dishes. That was already clean. And I also pulled these out. Um, I wash these once a day. I try to wash them once a day. Sometimes I go like a little bit more than 24 hours, but it's not like a day and a half. It'll be like 30 hours. So I'm gonna wash those. Close the fridge. This is the little pump and bra that I use. I got this for free secondhand. Um, through the community. There's some group that I'm in um, on Facebook and it's a local community where people like help each other out. Families helping families. So I shake my milk up. Um, a lot of people will say like don't do that, you'll hurt the milk. But I also read somewhere that you would literally have to shake this like more like more vigorously than like those paint shakers at Home Depot. Like you like ultrasonic shaking it to destroy the milk proteins and nutrients in it. And the only thing I would say about shaking is don't, you don't wanna give your baby the shaken milk right away because the bubbles will give them gas. But I take simethicone, which is gas relief, four times a day, and I give him gas relief, which is the baby version of simethicone, the gas drops all throughout the day because he's a gassy baby. And when he's gassy, he won't nurse. He'll like arch his back and like pop off my nipple and like my nipple gets super sore and it's just horrible. And I know he's not having a good time because he's like uncomfortable, he's having cramps. But other than that, he doesn't cry a lot. Like he won't like scream, but I can tell when he has a bunch of farts. So another thing about me is we have seven cats and I collect most of my milk at nighttime and we bed share. So like if this, this is a silicone milk sucker, it's a manual breast pump. If this is on my breast, like cat hair will get on it. So I try really hard like not to get the cat hair in the milk, but oh my gosh, there's like, you, if you look closely, if you can see it, you'll see like cat hair on the outside of the bottles. Please do not judge me. Like I make sure that the bottles don't have it like to where it'll pour into the bags. So anyway. The reason I'm shaking them is to get the fat off the sides of the bottle. And then what we do, this is clean already. I cleaned it last time. I get a paper towel. Because I like to wipe the cat hair off of the outside before I do this. So like I said, don't judge me. This is a Dr. Brown's Natural Flow Formula Mixing Pitcher but it is great for, for breast milk. And I'm not an exclusive pumper, so like I said, I just have an oversupply. And I'm gonna put the plug in the sink. I try to get all the drops, but honestly, I can't stand here like forever, you know? 
and I just pour it all in here. And I've posted my method in Facebook groups before, and a lot of other moms have commented and said, why don't you just bag up, like, why would I not just bag this and bag this and just bag this? Because this is only half an ounce. This is like four drops. This isn't even half an ounce. And then it's also collected all at different parts of the day. And if you don't know, um, your milk at nighttime has like melatonin in it and sleepy time stuff that helps the babies to get tired and go to sleep. And your milk during the day has cortisol and other hormones that help the baby to stay alert. And so I'm not gonna label like, oh, this was a 3 p.m. And like, I'm not gonna try to like, cause if I give him a 3 p.m. milk at nighttime, would he stay awake? Like, would it keep him alert? I don't know, I don't wanna mess with it. So I would rather just mix it all so that it's like even, so that it's more like, if I'm making any sense. So it's not like a sleepy milk and it's not like an awake milk. It's just like a baseline, like, I don't know. It makes sense in my head. The lactation consultant that I saw that evaluated Waylon for a tongue and lip tie said that it's fine and it's actually really smart to mix it because then it's a more balanced profile of nutrients and fat. Um, so, I don't know. If you guys think that that's like a stupid way to do it, then don't do it this way. But this is how I do it. So, I collect milk for four days and then I put it in the pitcher. And then... At first, I wasn't making a lot of milk. This is actually pretty light for me because he has been like cluster feeding the last two days. Um, and also, I ran out of bags. It was Sunday night. I only had five bags, and I normally use like eight to ten bags. And so, I had to do six ounces in each bag, and I normally do three to four ounces in each bag just because they fle freeze flatter and I don't want to ever run into the problem of like defrosting milk and he doesn't drink it all which I know once you defrost milk you have 24 hours to um feed it to the baby but I'm sending him to daycare soon and like I don't know I just I would rather it be like I would rather waste milk bags than waste milk so I know some ladies freeze in six ounce increments because they want to save bags and save time but I'm worried that the daycare might like defrost a six ounce bag and like he wouldn't drink it all I don't know he probably would but I just the lady that runs the daycare out of her house she's really really smart and like in the know about like breast milk and stuff but she said that her employees she has like three or four other ladies that work with her she said that they have to still get trained on breast milk and like I'm worried like they're gonna waste a bunch of it or like overfeed him or something I don't know so it's probably irrational but I like to freeze them in three ounce increments is what I like to do I'm just gonna go check to see if the baby is still asleep yes Waylon is still asleep so like I was saying this is light for me <clears throat> lately I've been having um <clears throat> sorry lately I've been having like 38 to 42 ounces like I'll fill it up and it says do not fill above this line I'll fill it up to 38 and then have like a whole other like five ounces in one of these Medela things <clears throat> and um this is pretty light for me because he's actually been drinking a lot of milk off of me and um I, oh, like I said, I ran out of bags Sunday night, and so I still had, like, a bunch of milk in the fridge I needed to freeze, so on Monday morning, I went to Walmart and got bags, and then I froze milk on Monday, so this is only half of Monday, Tuesday, and half of today's milk. Normally, it would be anywhere from, like, 28 to 42 ounces, so this is pretty low for me, but, like I was saying, it's just... <clears throat> because of um I froze milk on Sunday and Monday if that makes sense and he's been eating more so what I do is I mix it all up like that I try to do it gently so there's not a lot of bubbles and foam so I can actually tell how much it is and I can see here that I have 20 ounces and then I usually use my phone to calculate I would do like 20 ounces divided by three um but I'm using my phone to record this so I'm gonna have to do some math I'm super bad at math you guys don't make fun of me 
Okay, so I did some math off camera, so there was no pressure. I have ADHD, and um, doing math publicly is like um, like a really bad anxiety thing for me. And I never learned my multiplications table. Oh, I didn't memorize it growing up. Like, I know a couple of them. So if I did my math right, it'll be about seven bags. It's like six point, like almost seven. So I also grew up in Baltimore, which if you've been watching the news lately, you know that there was, if you just Google like Baltimore education, there'll be a story about how like there was like 20 schools or something where like none of the kids were doing math on their own grade level. Like fourth graders couldn't do math on fourth grade level. Like 10th graders couldn't do math on 10th grade level. Like, it was something like 2,000 students failed their, like, standardized testing, and, and, like, 20 schools could not perform math on their grade level. So, I'm just going to blame my math skills on the Baltimore education system. <laughs> but, you guys, I'm so stupid because I thought I was out of bags, but I really wasn't. I had these up at the top, but <clears throat> I've never used the Mandela bags before. I started off on the Luna Motif, Motif bags because I got them for free. Um, with my breast pump that insurance paid for from Aeroflow breast pumps. They just sent me like a complimentary like free bag of breast milk bags and I got hooked on those and kind of like those the best and so I didn't even notice those up there and they don't sell those motive ones in the store so when I ran out I couldn't order online I had to get these Lansino bags. I don't like the the way these feels that feel they're kind of like squishy and I feel like they're gonna make a leak but everyone says that they're the best and they freeze like the flattest and they're like rectangular shape. I'll show you the shape of the motive ones um, after we do this. So I have my little bags, right? And we have to write, this is the bottles we use, Boo and Nourish. They're pretty cool, I like them. Waylon takes them, Waylon's not the, he's not like the picky kind with bottles. So this is how I do it. You put the date of your first collected milk. For like the first two months, you guys, I was putting the date that I was bagging the milk. And like, even though I knew you were supposed to put the date of the first collected milk, I was like, it doesn't matter. It's only a four day difference because I'm doing it every four days anyway. But I guess it does kind of matter. So I switched to doing it for the date of the first collected milk. And today is February 15th, 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th. Oh, but we didn't freeze milk on the 11th, so 12th. So I put 12 Feb, and I don't put a time, and I'll put Waylon, 3 ounces. And the reason why I put 12 Feb is I am active duty in the military, and I just got so used to um, writing my date like that, if that makes sense. Instead of writing like February 12th, I write 12 Feb, and then you can put the year at the end. So it would be like 12 Feb 23. A lot of people think it looks weird because only 1% of the population is eligible to be in the military and 1% of those people are in the Air Force. So less than 1% I'm in the Air Force. Less than 1% of people in our country are in the Air Force and so the majority of people in my country United States is used to the date format of the other way. Okay, 12 Feb. Whoops, that's a 5, not an F. Come on, brain. Waylon, 3 ounces. And I'll just show you my handwriting is trash. I hate, like, I can't, I go so fast I can never lift my pen up enough. I get, like, these little squigglies between the letters, like trailers. Some people probably see my handwriting and be like, oh, God, I can't even watch this lady anymore. Okay, so I put this away. Let me just show you my cabinet, you guys. So here's the setup. There's my bags. And down here's his Boone Nurse bottles. There's my Sharpies. And then... The storage bags, these are some adapters that go from my Spectre Pump to my Medela Cups. 
And then those are the little syringes that I use, that I was using to collect colostrum before he was born. Those are some Tommy Tippy bottles we never use. Those are the Medela bags and then like some extra brushes and stuff to clean with. And then behind here are the quart size bags, Ziploc bags, because I like to freeze my milk in those. So let me put you guys back. Went for a little trip there, huh? Okay. And now I'm an idiot because I was so worried about talking to you guys. I threw these in the sink prematurely. Since these already have milk in them, I use them to measure out three ounces. So I put this there, and then I washed my hands before I started, but then I was touching my phone, so let me wash my hands again. Because some ladies, they don't like to touch inside of the bags, but I do. It's not that I like it, but I just, it's too much of a hassle to like not. So, I just make sure my hands are washed really well. And I just figure, like, there's no point in being completely sterile because Waylon lives here. He's exposed to the germs in this house anyway. So, I figure if I just wash my hands, it's fine. It's not like, I mean, we went to Winco today, but that's, that's it. So, my hands are, like, basically clean. Okay, so... We'll just stir it again. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> See, I have ADHD. That's the ice maker. So what I do is I rip all of these off. And I know like for most people, or maybe some people, I don't know, this is like super mundane. Like obviously you rip the bag, like rip the stuff off the bags, like I don't really have to show this part, but for some people, they like watching stuff like this. Like, even if they just put the video on, like while they're hanging out with their kids or whatever, as long as they like keep talking and stuff, it's interesting for them to listen to. So, throw those away. And now we're gonna put three ounces. Slide that aside. And I'm always terrified that the cats are gonna come through here and knock it over. Oh god, there's a cat hair on top of this one. Don't worry, I got it. Three ounces. Three ounces. Three ounces. Three ounces. Three ounces. Oh, I dropped. I dropped a drip. I dripped a drop. Oh God. That's for the angel babies, right? That's what I tell myself. And then I hate these because it's not marked. It's like etched. It's like a texture. It's not like a graphic design on there. Okay, so this ended up being like two and a half. No, two ounces. So that's fine. So I'll just change one of the bags to say two ounces. And then a the thing with this pitcher, you guys, you have to tilt it like, one time I went like this and then like that and then more milk came. Just like make sure you keep tilting it basically. Like go this way and then like go that way or else you'll drop a drip, you'll drip a drop. So I'm gonna change this bag to say two ounces. Remember when I said I was bad at math, you guys? <laughs> Please do not laugh at me. I know just enough math to get through life. Okay, so now, scoot this over here. Pull out the stuff from, this is from Monday. Close the freezer. Get a quart bag, because I like using the quart bags. These are three ounce bags, and I had eight bags, I think. I should start making bricks with the gallon bags, but I kind of just like doing it like this. I don't know. See? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight times three. Put that back in the freezer. See, so normally I have this little tray over there where the camera is sitting. But we'll do it right here because I'm filming. This was the two ounce one. Oh, shit. I poured it on the outside of the bag like a vodka. Give me this bag. Now I'll put that in here. And then I just do that and then I squeeze the air out. Oh, I got some on the zipper. Try not to get it on the zipper. Squeeze the air out and then finish. It's not it's not gonna make a leak exactly, but you're at a higher risk of it leaking if you get it on the zipper because when it freezes it expands. But it's not too big of a deal because I plan on putting them in Ziploc bags when I send them to daycare just in case they're gonna leak anyway. What's that sound? Oh the bubbles. Pouring the three ounces into the bag now. Get some grips. And then squeeze it all the way till there. And then squeeze. Is that a cat hair on the outside or the inside? It's on the inside. See what I'm saying, you guys? You guys are going to be like, wow, this lady is a horrible mom. She's bagging up the cat hair. I just hope the daycare lady never sees the cat hair. Like, if there's a cat hair in here. Squeeze and zip. And then do it flat like this. While I'm doing this, like, I know Waylon's safe on the couch, but, like, I just imagine like somehow he's suffocating. I'm gonna go check on him after this one. Like it's only been a couple minutes, but it's like in my head he's suffocating somehow. And that's postpartum anxiety, which I don't think postpartum anxiety is actually a disorder. I think it helps us to make sure our kids survive. It's like built in biologically. All right, one second. Hey there, Mr. Man. Say, I woke up from my couch nap, Mommy. Say, I'm a happy baby. Mommy, pick me up, pick me up. Okay, let me just kind of edit what I said a minute ago. Postpartum anxiety definitely is a disorder, but I think a little bit of it is natural and healthy, is what I meant to say. Obviously, there's types of postpartum anxiety where like, you're like super freaking out um, and also postpartum anger I think is tied with postpartum anxiety so be on the lookout for those symptoms of being like angry frustrated anxious hey Waylon can you say hi to mommy's new YouTube channel he's usually on my other channel my fish tube fish tank channel say I'm in the baby wrap mommy puts me in the baby wrap and then she can't see okay back to what we were doing say hi my name's Waylon I'm three months old I got red hair like my granddad I got red hair like my granddaddy and say squeeze. Wayland says, I got my cookies and milk outfit on. It's super cute. Yeah, it's super cute. Yes, sir. Mommy's little Mr. Man. He's gotta be like 15 pounds by now. 
I weighed him last week on Wednesday or Thursday, and he was 14 pounds, like 11 ounces or something. Say, Mom, I'm not that big. I'm just full of poop. He did not poop today. He normally poops every day. I know stuff like this is, like, super boring, but, like, moms care about stuff like this because, especially, like, stay-at-home moms because their whole life is their kids, which I'm still on maternity leave, so I'm, like, kind of like a stay-at-home mom, except for I'm still getting paid. So, it's like my whole life is Waylon, which is good. But stuff like his pooping schedule is very exciting for me now, isn't it? Yeah. I never thought I would become poop obsessed until I had a baby. Apparently it's normal. Lots of moms are like poop obsessed. They want to see the poop. His pediatrician didn't want to see it. I was like, he hasn't pooped in six days. This was like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, will you look at the picture of what his poop normally looks like and what his poop looked like the other day? I think there's something wrong. I think he has a blockage. She was like, no, I don't need to see the picture. And I was like, you're his pediatrician. Like, please, can I show you the picture of his poop? She doesn't have kids. And I think she, like, just graduated pediatrician school. I don't know. She's, like, super young. She's an active duty in the military. She's, like, a captain or something. But I was like, please, like, what? She's like, you, she was like, I said it, like, three times. I was like, I can show you the pictures. She was like, I don't need to see it. And she was like, but it sounds like you really want to show me. Like, what the? Yes, you're his pediatrician. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Let's go into the freezer. Da da da. There's the milk. Seven times, well, six times three ounces, and then one, and then a two ounce bag. So I put it like this. Ba ba ba. I gotta open the door all the way. There it is. Nice and flat. Don't judge my dirty freezer. Okay, now we're gonna take this milk from our regular freezer up here in the kitchen down to the deep freeze downstairs. Now I just write on this little sticky note how much I'm adding. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bags times three ounces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven bags times three ounces. These are my six ounce bags I was telling you about. So I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Five bags times six ounces. What was this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bags times three ounces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. And then I will make my husband do the math on that later. <laughs> or I'll do it with a calculator. Okay, so now I'm just going to put them in. And then I'll show you guys what I got in the deep freezer. Oh, excuse me. Okay, here we go, and this will conclude our video. This is a seven cubic foot freezer, and it's gonna suck because when he turns six months, I have to dig down into the bottom to get the oldest milk because I have to start feeding him the oldest milk at six months. I don't want to wait a year, but that's it. That's all the milk. According to my notes here, I have this much. <laughs> I started with like 550 ounces and then I've been adding ever since. But that's it for today. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us and freezing milk and watching the video to the end. And we'll see you next time. Uh, post in the comments what you think I should make a video of next time. Say bye, Waylon. Say bye. Bye bye.